Hey all Scott here. I finally found my fourth calling in life. A match made in heaven. I finally opened up my own tattoo parlor. Welcome to the scab lab. You ever think to yourself, man, f skin. Well, this is the place for all you tattoo chow hounds such as myself. And if you're lucky, you get your picture in the No Infections Club. We give out free samples and if you don't like it, I am so sorry for what I just did. Of course, to prove how much I believe in our product, I will give myself a sleeve. I'm thinking blue today. The business and I weren't a good fit. Sometimes two things just go together. Seven if you're open-minded. And with every new video game console release with new unique features, it gets me thinking about what games would be a match made in heaven for it. On the opposite end of things though, some games just don't make sense on some consoles, but damn it, they pull through. Like Boogie on PlayStation 2. You think God knew this would be a thing eventually? Motion control dancing game on Wii, ported to PS2 three months later. After all, those players were sending us death threats. I mean, so many Wii games were also made available on the PlayStation 2 and vice versa, but most of those games were standard video games, ones that made sense with a normal controller in mind. But you get games like Boogie and Rayman Raving Rabbids going multi-platform that really only make sense on the Wii. They were all about crazy motion controls, but I'm a real gamer. I need a controller to play Nintendogs, not that touch touchscreen. According to Wikipedia, although anticipation was high for the game, it received negative reviews. Yeah. Boogie! Better than the sequel's Wikipedia page, the second line is denying the rumor of Wii balance port support. Hey, the people have to know. But those are examples of games that just don't feel right on certain platforms, which just goes to show the Wii was the perfect place for them. Xbox snapped exclusive games in certain series for the entirety of its existence. Series that were PlayStation staples like Odd World and Tomb Raider were exclusive to Xbox consoles, which didn't feel off as much as they felt dirty. Like, come on guys, you paid to make Rise of the Tomb Raider exclusive for a year and was it really worth it? Does this game's blood scream Xbox? But then you have the perfect fit, which in some cases are games that never even happen. How in God's name did a new Pokemon Snap game not release on Wii U. It's the perfect console for it. You have the Wii U gamepad and you can look around with it and snap pictures with the trigger. I mean, that sounds fucking abhorrent, but I'm thinking this from Nintendo's perspective. They love bullshit like this. And honestly, it wouldn't have been that bad. They had the idea of using this thing as a camera in other games, namely Fatal Frame. They funded Fatal Frame on Wii U, but not Pokemon Snap. They had Miiverse. You could share your Pokemon pictures with other Wii U owners within your own secret club. Like, I don't already do that, but still. Come to think of it, the Nintendo 3DS could have had a Pokemon on Snap, using Fatal Frame as another example. It's always my best excuse. There's a spin-off on here, Spirit Camera, using augmented reality, which Pokemon famously did with Pokemon Go on smart devices, so you could have made a bad Pokemon Snap game this way. In the end, I'm happy they waited until the Nintendo Switch to bring Snap back via new Pokemon Snap, as there's really no gimmicks like what I've been talking about. Just a pure new Snap game. But I love nonsense like this, and Nintendo does too. Because of that, it's just puzzling to me they didn't bring the series back on these platforms as they had gimmicks prior Time for a new game. Pardon my French, but I'm gonna talk about Wii U more. Minecraft was a game that felt tailor-made for the Wii U. With that being said, what the hell was this version of Minecraft? Nintendo built up a massive announcement in late 2015 with it being Minecraft Wii U Edition. No matter how you slice it, that was a big deal for Nintendo. Let them have this moment. But the concept of Minecraft on Wii U was perfect. That gamepad touchscreen would have made item management and crafting a dream, to which the developer of Minecraft Wii U Edition said, yeah, that would have been cool. Minecraft Wii U Edition ended up being nothing more than a straight port of Minecraft. No real exclusive gameplay tweaks taking advantage of the Wii U's interface, no touchscreen support, and no advantages to using the gamepad. It was just Minecraft. So yeah, Minecraft was a perfect fit for the Wii U, but all we ended up getting was Minecraft on the Wii U. I mean, I guess there's actually touchscreen support, but it's not intuitive. I was thinking a setup on the bottom screen designed for touch, not shoehorning it in as a secondary input that barely registers half the time. After responding justifiably to such a port, I've got to ask, how did Ape Escape never go to the PlayStation Vita? Ape Escape was the go-to game on PlayStation 1, showcasing how dual analog control sticks can work. Not only was the Vita Sony's first dedicated handheld with two sticks, but you had all this other stuff. Cameras, a touchscreen, a back touchscreen, augmented reality, 3G cellular, what I would give for an Ape Escape game to use 3G. The PlayStation Vita was more advanced than my immune system, and while a few games definitely took advantage of and showed the potential of it, I just feel like an Ape Escape would have been a no-brainer. Its initial reason for existence was to validate a controller, so why not validate all this other junk? Or even the PlayStation VR, when that released for PS4, I think Ape Escape would have been great to push on that platform, especially considering VR is where old series go to die. Looking forward to a new Chibi Robo VR game. It's like it's not good right in front of me. Speaking of PlayStation, Sony released the PlayStation TV so we didn't have to. It was a tiny box that was fundamentally just a PlayStation Vita without any of the extra garbage. 
so it wasn't a PlayStation Vita. This was during the great boom of media streaming boxes. You buy a Roku or Apple TV and you're set for life. The PlayStation TV was just that, except it couldn't stream anything. This was just a PlayStation Vita without the screen, yet the way they marketed it was like it was a streaming box, even though it couldn't play Netflix. Never got Netflix support, and if you wanted to stream basically any video apps, you had to connect it to your PS4, control your PS4 through remote play through the PlayStation TV, and then watch the supported apps through that, which still didn't always work. How could you name a product the PlayStation TV when there's barely anything TV about it. Just call it PlayStation Mini or something. Instead, honestly, I bet a few people bought this wanting to stream movies, and in the end, it caused more harm than good. I'm going soliciting. Yeah, so Netflix would have been a perfect fit for the PlayStation TV, because it would have made the thing make actual sense. Oh, it's been that long? The Call of Duty games, honest to God, were the perfect fit on Wii U, and they cut them off too soon. You got the HD graphics and traditional controller support, plus Wii Remote and Nunchuck support. It's crazy, I know, but some people like them. You get far more precision, and it's basically as close to keyboard and mouse you could get on a console while also having its own benefits like an actual analog stick. But on top of that, you got split-screen multiplayer without the split-screen. One player on the gamepad, one on the TV. Frankly, Call of Duty and Wii U was a total match made in heaven, and I'm a proud member of that club. How did the DS get more entries? I guess I could say the same about the PlayStation Vita or PSP. The fact that those only got one Call of Duty each is honestly shocking. The PSP may have only had one stick, but I find it weird that it only got one Call of Duty before the series hit it big with Modern Warfare. And the PlayStation Vita only got one Call of Duty as well, but fun fact, it was bad. You'd think with the more hardcore nature of the PlayStation handhelds, Sony would have courted Activision more for Call of Duty games on the handheld, but no, the Engage got just as many. The DS? Man, it's weird. It's just weird. Sometimes I just have to be honest and tell it how it is. You may call Subway employees sandwich artists, I call them alchemists. Like, why was Castlevania Requiem put out on PS4 only? A collection of Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night right after Castlevania characters were revealed for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate exclusive to the Nintendo Switch? You put out a collection on the wrong platform. Same goes for the Disney Afternoon Collection, a compilation of old school Nintendo games. Sure don't want to put that on a Nintendo system. Mega Man Legacy Collection, released in 2015 for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but not Wii U, the system where most of Mega Man's fans were. He was in Smash Brothers, but a good chunk of classic Mega Man games were already available on the system. The first six, which is what Legacy Collection contained. So a compilation of games that are already available on the Wii U it didn't make a ton of sense. I get that. But they still put the game on 3DS where all these games are also available in the eShop. What was going on here? Michael Jackson's The Experience, another motion control dancing game, a perfect match for Wii and Xbox 360's Kinect, yeah. What about Nintendo DS, 3DS, PSP, and Vita versions? Don't forget the Mac. I never do. Honestly, more often than not, it seems like publishers go out of their way to ensure their game doesn't go on the right systems. All right, here's something that totally should have happened. Punch out on the 3DS. With the 3D display, I feel like you could have done a ton of great things with depth and timing your dodges. The punch out's always been a game of reading your opponent's movements and dodging at just the right time. So if the 3D display would have been utilized properly, it would have been easier to know exactly where the fist is in relation to your face and when exactly to block or dodge. You could have also done some fun in your face 3D effects, and I think Punch-Out on Wii's art style would have looked really good on the handheld. Now, for games that would have been perfect on Wii, Luigi's Mansion. What? Why did this not happen? The GameCube game had controls that could have perfectly used the Wii Remote's pointer! Instead, they opted to bring the game to 3DS for the 3D display, which I am crazy mixed on. Luigi's Mansion was originally tested with stereoscopic 3D, which was later scrapped, so the game appearing on the 3DS was almost like finally bringing justice to a badass idea. In reality, some people didn't think the remake was badass, but it was ass bad. It's incredibly commendable. They got the original Luigi's Mansion to work on the system as well as it did, and seeing it in 3D is a cool way to rectify that original idea. But this was too little too late. Luigi's Mansion for 3DS came out in 2018, which finally gave my watch purpose. People didn't want to play on the 3DS, DS at this point, they just wanted to play Nintendo Switch games. The 3DS can't get it up and has a resolution of 4. It's like, cool, but it's 2018 and I want this game in HD. So I'm conflicted about this. I feel like the Wii would have been the perfect system for the original Luigi's Mansion, but the 3DS is a great choice. This remake just would have been way better if it was back in 2015 or something. But I have to say, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was 
born to be a 3DS game. The title originated on Wii U and was a continuation of these types of stages that were in Super Mario 3D World, which was a sequel to Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS, and that made 3D World feel not super at home on Wii U because it felt made for the 3DS, and when Captain Toad came out for 3DS, it felt like the circle had been completed. Ever since July 13th, 2018, I felt accomplished. Treasure Tracker stages feel like living dioramas. You can't jump and have to traverse them by rotating them fully around, figuring out where to go. With that 3D display and how short the levels are, this feels right at home on the handheld, more so than the more popular Nintendo Switch board. I'm putting the Switch version of the game in the weird choice category, especially since it came out quite a while before Super Mario 3D World did for the Switch. Like, that game makes far more sense logistically on Switch. Captain Toad had a lot more of the Wii U gamepad's DNA baked into the experience. A lot of Wii U games never felt like they took full advantage of the gamepad enough, or if they did, it was a total gimmick. Captain Toad was designed fully around the thing, not to the point that it makes the game more fun or completely unplayable without it, but looking at the Switch version, a lot of this feels way shoehorned on. Any touchscreen or microphone business had to be reworked on Switch. On the 3DS, it just feels made for the system. And when a game feels made for a system it wasn't even made for, that shows you how well it fits. And speaking of Mario 3D World, I have opinions. Considering Captain Toad got ported to 3DS, it almost made me want to see what 3D World would look like on the handheld. I mean, its direct predecessor was a 3DS game. I felt like if Nintendo was really strapped for cash, they could have attempted a 3D World port on the 3DS, to which I don't think it would be that bad. The game would have 3D support, and in many cases, I think would feel more at home. But overall, I actually think Super Mario 3D World and Super Mario Odyssey should have swapped consoles. Mario Odyssey has a ton of enemies you can capture and control, and I feel like that is prime for Wii U gamepad fodder. Plus, the world map you can bring up feels like it would have worked really well on the bottom screen at all times. 3D World having quick bite-sized levels just works with the handheld form factor of the Nintendo Switch, plus being multiplayer focused is what the console's all about. But I've talked about the Wii U enough for now. Why not go in the exact opposite direction and talk about some dumb bullshit I know nothing about? The Persona series has been consistently tied to PlayStation consoles, but spin-off titles, those could be anywhere. Hide. I never got that. If anything, it made sense to make the core series multi-platform and then put the spin-offs on a limited number of consoles, because why would the fighting game spin-off sequel to Persona 4 on a console that's never gotten Persona 4 do better than Persona 4? Persona 4 Arena and Arena Ultimax came to Xbox 360. Persona 4 was a PlayStation exclusive for the longest time, and these were really the only Persona Persona games on Xbox at the time. Persona 5 Strikers was a sequel to Persona 5 while being a spin-off hack and slash at the same time and came to Nintendo Switch, but it came out without the original Persona 5 on the platform. I put these spin-offs on systems, but not the actual games. If you're confident enough these spin-offs will do well, what makes you think the games they're based off of that got critical acclaim across the board wouldn't? I guess Atlas at the time assumed 360 owners didn't want RPGs and just wanted fighting games, but it would have made more sense to me if they just fully committed to the series being PlayStation exclusive rather than sprinkling spin-offs on other systems. We're gonna give people Persona Q2. It's filled with fan service and is on a platform that never got any of the games it references. But sometimes, games like to roll with the idea of being an imperfect fit for the console they're on. Take, for example, any M-rated games on the Wii and DS. Like Mad World, the whole gimmick of this game is that it's incredibly gruesome and bloody, and it's on the Wii. It almost felt like an in-joke. Let's put this gory game on the Wii. We'll lose all of money, but it'll be really funny. Weirdly enough, the fact Mad World didn't fit on the Wii at all made it fit that much more. I can't imagine this game on anything but the Wii. Opposites attract, and I could say the same about the House of the Dead franchise, but in reality, this is perfect on the Wii through and through. Light gun games kind of died out there, especially on consoles. You need specific hardware for them all, and regular first-person shooters were just more appealing to people. But the Wii brought them back with its pointer functionality. House of the Dead 2, 3, and Overkill work perfectly here. It may feel out of place with Overkill being one of the top sayer of f**ks in all of gaming, but this series was right at home on the console. Same can be said for Sin and Punishment. They brought this Japan exclusive series back for the Wii worldwide because it was an unreal shooter. And it works flawlessly here, and honestly gives me a lot of hope for revivals like this. Sometimes, you just have to wait until that perfect piece of hardware comes out. You can't just put whatever out on every single console, it pays to be patient sometimes. I thought as a kid, Super Smash Bros would be perfect on Nintendo DS, or even a 2D sprite-based one on Game Boy Advance. I was wrong, but I think they could have made a great stripped-down version, though they decided to wait until the Nintendo 3DS to make a portable Smash Brothers, and that was probably for the best. I thought Star Fox would have been perfect on Wii, you move the ship around with the nunchuck, aim with the Wii remote, they even had a little micro game about it and WarioWare smooth moves, but... The Wii came and went and we never got a Star Fox, but that was probably because they had an even better idea for the next console. Bad example, but you get what I mean. You just have to wait for the right time to bring Metroid Prime back. 
Why was Federation Force on 3DS? You're making a multiplayer first person shooter and you put it on this thing? The only reason they did this that makes sense is because the 3DS was cheaper to develop for because when you think about what system makes the most sense for a co-op multiplayer first person shooter with tons of online elements, yeah sure, pick the stupid pick. I think a lot of games would have been great to see on the Game Boy Color. I'm mainly talking DX ports, like with what happened to Link's Awakening. Originally a Game Boy game brought over to color with a few enhancements. Just the fact it was in full color this time honestly wasn't enough, but some random extra tweaks were done to truly make this the definitive version. Games like Super Mario Land 2 are for the love of God, Metroid 2 would have been perfect candidates for Game Boy Color releases. A lot of games made for the wrong platform, well, they can be rectified later down the line. Mario Party The Top 100, I swear to God. You're gonna compile the best 100 mini games from across the home console Mario Parties and put them on the 3DS and not even acknowledge the handheld ones at all? You're gonna put this game out with just one really bad game board to play multiplayer on? This was just done to put something out on the 3DS that holiday. It was obviously made not to celebrate the series, which is what the marketing would lead you to believe. It was developed because it was easier to make than a brand new Mario Party from scratch and put it on the 3DS because just like Federation Force, it's just flat out easier to do that. And Mario Party on a handheld and not a home console is like ordering deep dish pizza with no cheese, sauce, and extra olives. Go ahead, try it. Thankfully, we got more chances with new Metroids and Mario Parties on systems that make more sense. But Mario Party only got like two games on the Wii, which is like, what? The Wii was a party game machine. How did the GameCube get four of them, but the Wii only got half of that? I mean, obviously the developer behind the scenes was going through some changes, so they couldn't really do a lot for a while. But at the time I was thinking, wow, Nintendo's really showing restraint not putting 11 Mario parties on the Wii. When in reality, Nintendo couldn't bear the weight. Some things just fit a console perfectly. It's shocking there's not more of it out there. Like football games on the Dreamcast, Wii U, GameCube with Game Boy Advance connected, pretty much anything with a personal screen on your controller. You can pick what you want to do without anybody else seeing. It truly makes me wish 08 was on the Dreamcast and thank Christ 09 wasn't. But that dual screen experience made games like The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, Pac-Man vs, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles possible. But the act of owning multiple Game Boy Advances and Link cables made these games messier than they had to be. So, they waited to put some of them on consoles without the personal screen? God. Damn it! Why wasn't Pac-Man vs. on Wii U? It would've been perfect! They used one Game Boy Advance for a player playing as Pac-Man, then all the other players play as Ghost on the TV, and you're telling me they didn't put this on Wii U, but Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures 2 made the cut? But then they put it on Switch! Like, cool, but why did you skip out on the console when it made perfect sense on? Four Swords Adventures remade on Wii U? It would've been perfect as well! The dual screen experience, it could've been the first time they allowed for multiple gamepads on one system! But, no! They remade Twilight Princess, a game I could already play on the Wii U, like, come on! Why couldn't they release a USB adapter to play 3DS games on here? You have everything you need! You could have had one screen on the gamepad, the other on the TV, they re-released DS games digitally on the Wii U eShop, let us play our 3DS games on this thing! I mean, sure, Super Mario Maker is a perfect fit on Wii U, but you wait to take all your dual screen games from the GameCube and put them on other platforms after the Wii U! Eternal Darkness would be crazy with the Wii U gamepad! Or like an actual Chibi Robo game, you could do a bunch of stuff with the gamepad, moving it around, or just actual sequels to a bunch of their DS games. You have a dual screen with a TV there, you can do so much with it. So, long story short, the Wii U's great.